Hey everybody! Now is the time for Let's Talk About Pop Music for winter of 2018. We're at that point in the charts where the hits from last year are starting to stagnate on the charts and there aren't a lot of new things. But I have to say, from what new stuff we got, I've liked it a lot. This is probably going to be one of the most positive LTPM videos I've ever made. There was a lot of stuff on the charts that I enjoyed. But there was also some crap, so let's just dive in. Darling, just kiss me slow. Your heart is all I own. And in your eyes... Definitely the first big hit of the 2018 Billboard calendar year. And overall, my reaction to Perfect is pretty much exactly the same as my reaction to Thinking Out Loud. I think it's boring, but there's not really anything offensive about it, and I can understand why somebody else would like it. There are actually two versions of this song, and both of which have gotten a lot of chart presence. The first one is just Ed Sheeran on its own, and the second one is the duet with Beyonce. Believe it or not, I do think that Beyonce adds something to the track. There are a lot of very cliched, overused sentiments in this song, but they ring a little bit less fake when they're being reciprocated and given by both sides. But even so, there's just nothing interesting about Perfect, not from a lyrical, production, or vocal standpoint. It's just sort of there. I would say that the Ed Sheeran is meh, and the Ed Sheeran and Beyonce duet is okay, but either way, I don't really care for this song. Okay, let the record show that I do like this song. It's not particularly complex or interesting, but it has some good energy and I really like the intensity to it. Mostly, I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit more about Cardi B. I was, and still am, pretty indifferent towards Bodak Yellow, but since she started getting featured on songs, I have to say that I'm starting to warm up to her. She definitely has this very strong confidence about her that I like, and in all three of the songs that she's been featured on, she has been the best performer on every single one of them. She has some presence, and when you pair her up with an actually good beat, like the one in No Limit, it's actually very entertaining to listen to her. Cardi B has become one of the best rappers on the charts currently. As a rapper, she's not particularly insightful or intelligent, but as a performer, she always seems to be having fun and putting her all into what she's doing. I would give her a tentative thumbs up at this point in time. Gucci gang, 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 Gucci gang. Spread their rats on new chain. My bitch love do cocaine. Ooh. All right, let's just all give ourselves a little pat on the back. It took years. The pop charts have been searching incessantly, but we finally did it. We finally found it. We have found the bottom of the barrel trap rap song. Migos, Young Thug, and Future have been trying for years, but this newcomer, Little Pump, managed to do it on his first try. This song is so thoroughly unimpressive in every conceivable way that it actually loops around and becomes impressive again. I am awestruck by how much not caring they managed to shove into just two minutes. I am shocked that he actually manages to make statutory rape sound boring. I am deeply impressed on just how much they didn't care about anything in this song. This is like the nirvana of not caring. It's kind of beautiful in a sick, twisted way. I do admit that I hate actually listening to this song, but there are some parts of it that I do think is kind of funny. And the entire thing in general is just a pretty big Migos copy. He even does the same weird like call and response at the end of every single line the way that Migo does, except he's all alone, so he just does it to himself. That I think is kind of funny. But seriously, this song is awful. It is just the bottom of the barrel trap rap. I try not to say it this early on, but I am almost certain that this is going to get a place on the 2018 worst list. I'm always ready to take a life again. I've said a couple of times in the past that I don't really care for The Weeknd and kind of think that he's overrated as an artist. Out of all the songs he'd made before this, my favorite was Starboy, but this song, Pray For Me, is like Starboy but even better. This one gets my full endorsement. 
The first thing is the beat. I like the beat in this more than I like the beat in Starboy, and the beat in Starboy is incredible. I don't know what it is about this beat, but it's just so good. Massive thumbs up to the producers. Then there's the lyrical content. It won up Starboy by actually having some. Starboy wasn't about anything, it was just a vehicle for the beat, but this is actually about something, and I like the lyrics here. Then there's Kendrick Lamar, continuing with his chart success and delivering one of the best verses he's ever done. Pretty much everything in this song just comes together. The only part of it that I'm not completely behind are those weird tribal cry things. Those I could have done without, but everything else, two thumbs way up. This is a really good song. One, don't pick up the phone, you know he's only calling cause he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let him in, you have to kick him out again. Three, don't be his friend. I like this one a lot too. We've seen this exact situation so many times in pop music before. The relationship where the guy just isn't good for the girl. But a lot of times, the girls just dive in anyway. But in this one, she's actually taking charge of her own decisions. It's such an oddly responsible pop song, but I appreciate it a lot. I also like Dua Lipa as a performer. Part of me is miffed that her voice is deeper than mine, but she turns in a really good performance. She has some character to her. The only thing that I don't really like about this song is the production. I think that the drop could have been so much better. I'd say that more than anything else, this isn't one of my favorites as much as this just makes me excited for Dua Lipa's singles in the future. Dua Lipa shows a lot of promise, and if we're lucky, she can actually make some new rules on the pop charts. I am pretty soundly indifferent towards this song, and I feel a little bad about it because Halsey is clearly trying really hard. I have never really been able to get into Halsey as a performer. She's not bad, but I just don't really see the star power. There is never really anything in Halsey that made her stand out from the other Lord wannabes that we've been getting over the past few years. Her singing's okay, but her writing is pretty standard and she doesn't really seem to work with a lot of really good producers. In summation, I never really cared one way or the other about Halsey, and Bad at Love did absolutely nothing to change that fact. I don't wanna die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the things that they wish on me. Hope I got some brothers that I live me. I actually felt kind of surprised when I saw that Drake's newest singles debuted in the top 10. One of them debuted at number one, and as of recording this, is still there. I thought that we had just kind of decided to slowly push Drake away considering how underwhelming his 2017 was. But no, this one shot right to the top of the charts and it actually has some staying power. I don't really know why, because God's Plan is the most pathetic song Drake has ever released. And considering the fact that he's also made Hotline Bling and Fake Love, that's saying an awful lot. God's Plan is essentially the song equivalent of those YouTube videos where the YouTuber's crying in the thumbnails about how all the haters are just getting to them, but when you actually click on the video, it's just them talking about their haters and they don't even seem that sad about it. It even has the clickbait down pat, but instead of crying in a thumbnail, you have a very misleading title. This song has absolutely no right to be called something as impressive and important sounding as God's Plan. This is just Drake whining about how nobody seems to like him. If there really are genuine fans of Drake out there, I don't know why. He has made this song before, and he will absolutely make it again. For whatever reason, God's plan for humanity seems to involve a lot of Drake getting big hits on the pop charts. I mean, I guess it could be worse. I mean, there are definitely worse rappers out there, but I am just sick of it. I am 100% over listening to Drake's songs on the charts. This is probably my favorite hit of the year so far. It tells the story about a relationship between a dad and son. How they never really saw eye to eye and they fought a lot. And this is them looking back on their relationship. 
What's so great about this song is how it just so fluidly goes back and forth between being from the point of view of the dad and being from the point of view of the son. There's a lot of very real, raw emotions in this song, and there aren't a lot of easy answers in it too, but there's something comforting about that. There's something comforting in seeing such a real situation being presented so honestly. This isn't exactly relevant, but I would like to point out that NF is usually a Christian rapper, but this is a secular song of his that got crossover success and is a hit on the normal charts. I like that. Usually Christian artists are written off as not being very good, but it's really nice to see that they can make great music for everybody. I really do love this song, and I'm glad to see it in the top 20. Okay, the last song that I'm going to talk about is Endgame by Taylor Swift featuring Ed Sheeran and Future. Now, it really does seem like everybody just wants to forget about Reputation as quickly as possible. By Taylor Swift standards, this song absolutely tanked on the charts. It got up to number 18 right after the music video got released, but then sank like a stone and hasn't really been heard from since. However, personally, I do like this song. I would go into more detail, but I already have. I was listening to a radio broadcast, and they were talking about Endgame. I called in and ended up getting into an argument with a guy who was hosting. And since he's a jackass, he recorded the whole thing and uploaded it to his channel. So if you want to hear my opinion on Endgame, go over there for it. But other than that, that's a wrap up for Let's Talk About Pod Music for winter of 2018. Overall, it was a pretty good quarter, and it really makes me look forward to the 2018 ahead of us.